I think so. I think we're gonna get very started. We had our outside. I like this podium, you guys. I feel like Judge Judy up here. Baloney! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Podcast Cross Zone 2. Thanks for being here. A sequel last year. How many guys were here last year? Oh, my God. Wow. Back for more. Excellent, excellent. Everybody having a good Gamer X 2014 so far? Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for being here. My name is Rob Roberts, and I'm going to be moderating today. Uh, if you listen to podcasts out there, you might know me from a couple shows, Orange Lounge Radio, uh, as well as Horde House. And joining me on stage today are some other awesome indie developers, broadcasters, podcasters, all that good stuff. So let's go around. I want to actually introduce everybody here. So we'll start here and go down. Just uh, tell us your name, your show, and what it's all about in like a sentence. In one sentence. In one sentence. How's it going, everyone? My name is Matt. I actually am the founder and uh, primary host of a, the Starboard Power Company. It's a Star Trek podcast you hope doesn't fail. I'm also glad to have my, uh, my first officer over there who's also recording, uh, Commander Eddie. I'm also uh, privileged, as I've been told to say from Rob, to co-host Horde House with Rob on the Vogue Network. The sh uh, Star Trek's about Star Trek, and Horde House is about all things online gaming, but never, ever too seriously. Hi, I'm Jason Toops, and I'm from Game Bar for your weekly dose of gay gaming geekiness. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we've been running the podcast since 2011, so we've reached our third year, our 160th episode. So it's it's been awesome. And uh, one of my co-hosts is sitting back there, Mr. Todd Harper. Say hi. <laughs> I'm Jeremy Johnson. I'm the host of the Koopa Club podcast, and we have two of my lovely co-hosts here with me. We've got Phil and Jonko sitting out there. Um, hey. Hi. Um, we focus on Nintendo and gaming with an LGBT twist. We've been doing it for two years now as of two weeks ago. So, woo! <laughs> Keep it simple. I'm James Anger. I co-host the GameBuoy.org video game podcast your twice-monthly port of call for gaming news and views that maybe aren't on your radar, but most definitely should be. We talk about left-of-center gaming news and, you know, opinions. My co-host is Slagkick. He's over there in the corner. Yay. Thank you for that. And you can uh, find our show over at GameBuoy.org. Hi, I'm Jamie, also known as Dark Sakura. I am on Orange Lounge Radio. I have to hang out with that guy at his house <laughs> and um, our other co-host who is not here because he has small people in his house that like to eat his food and make messes. Oh, that's what kids do. Hi. Um, but I've been doing Orange Orange Radio for 12 years and <laughs> <laughs> but I got my start guesting a whole bunch on Under Sedation Live which is also on the Vogue Network. And I used to do another podcast called Monday Comics Mania, but it's, it fizzled, so. All right, well, thank you guys, everybody. Now, I know the folks up here on stage are not the only podcasters in the room. Um, you know, we don't want this to just be like, we're up here and you're out there, because I know there's lots of other hardworking indie producers out there. So who else, who else has a podcast out there? Who else? Stand up, stand up, Sam, don't be shy. Hey. What is up? <laughs> Quickly, what show? What shows? What shows? Geek charisma. I already, I already know your geek charisma. Yeah. And I love your costume. Thank you. We're La Palanca. La Palanca. Now you guys actually started after last year's podcast Cross Zone, right? Yes. And you, you're all video games in Espanol. Yes. Correct. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> Tables, ladders, and podcasts. That's amazing. I like that. Wrestling, wrestling. Uh, I'm and sorry, what's your uh, URL? Uh, go to our Podbean page. Just Google for Tables, Ladders, Podcast, and you'll find it. Will do. Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. And sir? Uh, well, it's not gaming related, but I have a podcast called Old versus Gold. It's Old. a podcast that takes your fond childhood memories of movies and television and holds them up to the harsh light of today. Oh, oh <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and where, I, where can I find that? The crowd approves. <laughs> Excellent. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. 
It's Goonies out. never say die. Let's hope they don't do that sequel, though. No, 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 no. All right. Well, awesome to see so many um, hardworking indie podcasts out there. Anybody thinking about starting one? Because I know last year we talked a lot about the why, like why to do this and why to do podcasts. So it's great to see some more podcasts kind of born in the past year. Uh, this year we want to talk a little bit more about the how. And certainly any questions you guys might have for us, we want to go ahead and take those questions as well. Um, but I want to go around first and talk to our panelists a little bit about some of the how. Um, so the first question I have for you guys would be, how did how did you kind of how did your show come together? How did you find the co-hosts and kind of like that perfect blend that made your show? Uh, Grandpa Matt, we'll start with you. Because I'm the old wise sage. Uh, what how it kind of formed was, I tried to find uh, close friends who are hardcore Trekkies that knew exactly how to rewire a, a plasma conduit. <laughs> Good, someone got the reference. Uh, and the fact that I actually pitched the show title to two of my co-hosts and they actually got the reference about the Starboard Power Coupling always fails in every TNG episode. So um, uh, it's really, really about close friends and who had a passion about Star Trek and, and that can just hold a conversation in the complete tech lingo. Uh, and that's how kind of I aroused them about. And then for the Horde House side, um, I'm privileged to be with close friends in real life and also on the podcast that just love games and rip them apart and support them and then flip your opinions around halfway through the podcast. So um, it kind of came together with, Star with the Starboard Power Coupling is close friends who can hold a really, really nerdy conversation. Um, I met my co-host Jeremiah Bratton at the uh, Atlanta Eagle. Uh, yeah, both of our, uh, we came with friends and uh, each of our friends left with one another so that Jeremiah and I were left to our own devices. And I looked over at him and I was like, you look like a nerd, you play video games, right? And then we started talking about Final Fantasy and that started our entire friendship. Uh, we had, and then we would just talk on the phone all the time about games and eventually it just came to the point where it's like, why don't we just record this? And that's how it started. It's very simple. Yeah. Yes. 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 I mean, that's why we're called Game Bar. Hello. Oh. Oh. Secret origin. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I might ask about the titles, like where those came from, too. Yeah. So Koopa Club started on Grinder. No, I'm <laughs> hot. <laughs> That that is uh, that is not a joke. <laughs> now, see, on recon, I'm being 100% real. So Jonko, I actually met on Grinder, not in a sexy way, but he was wearing a Metroid shirt in his picture, and I said, "Oh my God, that shirt is awesome!" And then that's how we met. Um, I think I met Phil on GayGamer.net, I believe, and I met Ian, who is another person on our show that is not here, unfortunately, on the internet as well. So it was all internet. We're all across the country. We're multinational. That's how we met. I think the idea was that Phil and I were talking one day just about you know video games like you do, and we decided that it would just be fun to try a podcast, and we wanted to do something fun and light, and it just kind of snowballed from there, and we're still doing it. So it's a pretty simple story. No leather bar here, unfortunately. <laughs> we'll, we'll work Yet. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there. It's inverse episode. Man, I feel so pedestrian because I became super good friends with Slagkick over LiveJournal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, basically, we've been super good friends for forever, and we realize, you know, the games that we really like, you know, uh, Japanese imports, uh, JRPGs, anime-based games, uh, Kusoge, um, weren't really getting a lot of attention on podcasts, so it was like, okay, let's do a show about this stuff, and, you know, two and a half years later, here we are. Uh, we started doing Orange Lounge Radio after a long discussion on the BART. It was <laughs> Rob and um, the person he was with at the time. Um, but I, I met Rob playing DDR and Para Para <laughs> and Beat Mania and everything at, uh, well, we, we had seen each other a few times at Roseville Golfland, but I think it was that uh, Milpitas Golfland trip where we was like, it was like we took a, a pilgrimage to go see the Para Para machine. <laughs> and then we learned what shadowing was all about, and everyone knew Night of Fire. And then um, we just, I had been a guest a few times on Under Sedation Live, and then Rob introduced me to more people, most everybody right here. And I think things really took off from there. We started as a live show and decided we'd actually start recording it instead of letting our listeners bootleg us. So... That was it. We've just been doing it, and 
I'm spiteful enough to keep doing it. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about the networking because you mentioned, you know, that you've kind of met everybody else here. And um, I know we've been very close all these different shows and kind of getting to know you guys out there as well. And I know I got to give a shout out at some point to one of our other sister shows who couldn't be here today. Video Game Realness out in Toronto. Yes. Snaps for you guys. Yes. You. Delvin, you could have been here. Where are you? Flight's too expensive. I don't want to hear it. All right, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, let's let's talk a little bit about the networking sides of things. And and how do you how do you kind of like expand the listenership of, of your show? How do you how do you grow things uh, and for for the listenership and and kind of getting things out there in the greater podcast community, be it the LGBT podcast community or just the general gaming community in general? What do you do to kind of grow and network? Uh, it starts with social media. I mean, it's kind of the base platform these days. Twitter account, Facebook account. Without them, your podcast uh, might be already inhibited. Um, Stitcher network is pretty decent. They have some promotional opportunities there as well, and it's really easy to get your, your podcast on Stitcher. Um, I actually just recently dabbled, whether you support it or not, uh, in a Facebook ad. Yes, I know, one of those people. Um, for a five-day ad for five bucks a day for 30 bucks, 35 bucks. I, I went to a state school. I can't do math. Uh, whatever that added up to, um, it, it actually increased my likes by fourfold. Now, whether or not that translates to natural listeners, I need to let a week or two go and run my analytics with Libsynth, my hosting provider for the podcast, and then there's a true correlation. But at least there's a foundation, something measurable and tangible there. I mean, in 30 bucks, it's a chunk of change for some. Or it's four or five Starbucks coffees. If you make the sacrifice, you could try the marketing campaign. Uh, networking also with other uh, podcasters is huge because it's a community much like the indie gaming community and gaming in general. We support one another in, in this role. I mean, Rob called out to the other fellow podcasters out there. We all want to support one another. And then on top of whenever you start to develop sort of a listener base, um, engaging in them is key and prime. And call out to them and talk to them. If you're going to record a show, remember that somebody is going to be listening to this and talk directly to them. Um, and then also diversify any kind of social media presence you have. Like don't put it all in Facebook, but be on Twitter, be on Twitch, be on Google Plus, for whoever uses it, um, <laughs> and, and everyone. And then just like engage the communities in there. And uh, especially on Twitter, I think it's really important to, like if you're going to talk about a game in your show, uh, then tweet out to the publisher of the game, to the developer of the game, to the designer of the game, and engage them directly. Because then if they respond to you, then you know the dialogue starts to happen. Man, my answer is going to be so lame, because you pretty <laughs> much said everything I was going to say. Um, Obviously, social media, like they said, um, networking with other podcasts is very important. Just guesting on each other's shows, helping each other out, especially if you're an indie podcast, because, I mean, that's kind of why we're all here. We're all here to help each other. Also, um, 3DS Street Pass. Yes. I'm, I'm not kidding. That's actually gotten Koopa Club several listeners in the Chicago area, so... Just saying. No, that totally works. I have my Twitter on mine, and I've got followers yeah. from Street Pass. Like, it, it works. It's crazy. It actually works. But it, it is very important to kind of interact. If you do get listeners, to just kind of keep interacting with them. If they tweet at your show, just make sure you're answering their questions. Tweet at them random things. I mean, it, it definitely helps. And then they'll tell people about the show, and you'll get more listeners, hopefully. So. Excellent. Uh, you know, something, and I guess I'm really just going to be building on what you know has already been said, because we've already had so many great answers here. But something that we found very useful for GameBuoy.org is that, uh, you know, we sort of try to sort of add value rather than just posting, oh, listen to our show. You know, we'll post videos of, oh, we went to this cool event and played a game that's not out yet. Here's a video of it. And by the way, if you like this, listen to our show because we talk about this. And that way it's sort of like an, an and, like sort of a bonus that can build on top of what you're already interested in. <coughs> My big suggestion is also to look outside the box. I mean, seriously, word of mouth should never be discounted. As I've been walking around the convention for the last few days saying, hey, come to our panel, you know, check us out, you know. Um, I've also found that as a article writer, that um, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with the concept of SEO, search engine optimization. I've worked in that for a little while, and it taught me a whole lot about networking through different websites, even if you're not specifically going out to market yourself in that manner, even just having something in your signature on a forum that you visit. 
is a good way to get that out. We spread our the word on DDR Freak back in the day, and all of us had something about OLR in our uh, signatures. And then eventually I became a moderator, and then they had the Vivid members, and it kept spreading from there. So never discount the old-fashioned methods. Excellent. All right. Um, we are going to take your guys' questions, if you have any, in just a minute here. Of course, I don't. we don't have a mic to walk around the room, do we? So I guess you'll we'll have to come up here. But I have, I have just a couple more questions for you guys. We'll go this way this time with this question so that Jeremy can't complain his answer got stolen. So we'll go. <laughs> It'll just get stolen. No, it'll just way. get stolen. All right. We'll try. We'll try. All right. Um, and this question is, um, you know, there's so many. Po it's, it's very easy to podcast, which is a great thing, and it's a difficult thing. I mean, it's a great thing because it helps those diverse voices get out there. It's very easy to be able to podcast, right? But it's also difficult because it's hard to stand out, right? How many, if you think, how many of you guys have searched for video game podcasts on iTunes? There's zillions of them out there, right? There's lots and lots and lots. So how do, how did you find the identity for your show and what would make it unique? And I'll start with Jamie. Well, for us, it was Bimani. There was nothing else Bimani at the time. And, you know, DDR, Beatmania, Para Para, all the lovely, fun Konami games that we don't really get that much of anymore over here. But, um, and then we expanded from there, you know, once that niche started dying a little bit. But we also had our own things that we brought into that. Like, my husband and I, for example, we are massive video game collectors. We have about 40-something system, about, systems, about 6,000 games or so between us. And so it gave me a chance that I could bring up classic gaming into the podcast. So that's where I can contribute things the most. Rob can contribute a lot more of the social aspects and some of the more, you've got, actually got more of the newer systems than I do now. So Rob really covers a lot more of the newer things. And then we've got uh, uh, Loki now doing actually programming games. So we've sort of, as we've all grown as we've gone through the show, found what our special, our you know, mutant power was and <laughs> developed it in our own 12 year danger room. So um, I hope the, hi Marvel fans, by the way. So, um, so I think that it's a matter of evolution. We find our little thing and build up. I was just about to say in there, I, I think you're, you're also saying in there, like don't be afraid to evolve. Like if things change, evolve the show, right? And, yeah. and go with that, yeah, well, important. Stagnation is death, that's how I put it. You keep doing the same thing over and over, no one's gonna care anymore. Excellent. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's funny because I really feel sort of very similar to what Jamie just said. That's sort of why Psychic and I started GameBuoy.org, um, you know, because, again, we're really interested in sort of these niche games that I feel like I didn't hear a lot of people talking about on podcasts, a lot of like, you know, just really incredible stuff that's staying in Japan or, you know, games that are so bad that they become really fun to play. Uh, cat. Well, ex exactly <laughs> so. That's, that's the kind of thing I'm really into. Um, and so, you know, we just wanted to sort of add our voice to the choir and, you know, get word out there because I know other people are into this stuff too. And, you know, I see a lot of, you know, really beautiful and handsome listeners out there who have, you know, tweeted at us. So, you know, definitely I think some of you guys are interested in this stuff. So my answer is not going to be as great as that one. Um, essentially, I think our focus at first was because of when Phil and I were talking about it, we didn't really know of any other LGBT Nintendo podcast. It seemed like a very specific niche that no one was really filling. And, you know, much to my surprise, of course, there were several others that we just weren't aware of at the time. Um, but it really just started as we just wanted to have casual conversations from an LGBT perspective. It didn't necessarily have to be that every episode had a queer focus or anything like that. But, I mean, you can't really discount the fact that, you know, four gay men are going to have a different kind of take on things than, you know, IGN or whatever else. So that's kind of what it turned into. It turned into, well, we have enough... Bombcasts. We have enough IGN podcasts. We have enough of this. Let's just try to do something a little bit different, a little bit more sassy. And I think that <laughs> I think we've succeeded. I don't know. Yeah. We'll we'll see. Yeah. Well, I mean, we started Game Bar uh, with a similar sort of idea that we wanted to hear uh, queer voices and perspective uh, on games. Uh, we felt like there wasn't really a lot of that happening on podcasts in particular. So uh, that was kind of our focus in the beginning and. We started to ask um, developers and fans onto the show, and then we became sort of an interview type show. Uh, that lasted for about a year until we realized that the overhead for booking and recording guests is a huge time commitment. <laughs> I mean, it's really great, it's really valuable, and I think it enriched our perspective 
Um, but as a longevity thing, we had to sort of focus on the core group. Um, but then also what we began to bring to games was not up to the minute news, but more of an in-depth analysis on games that are out there with a focus on what themes, gameplay techniques, and sort of heroes appeal to gay audiences and why, you know, and why that's important. So ultimately that became our show. So with Horde House and, and Starboard Power Coupling, it's a little bit different. We just happen to be, with Starboard Power Coupling, three guys who love Star Trek who happen to be gay. We don't really happen to focus on that aspect of it, but occasionally we'll talk about how handsome Jake Sisko was in his jumpsuit as a teenager. <laughs> you know me. Uh, or Biogels and Enterprise, where they just would lube everyone up and cure them of disease. Those are some, those are some good episodes. I watch those re uh, repetitively. It doesn't work. Damn it. <laughs> Um, it worked as, in Doctor Who. Which is probably another podcast out there. But you can imagine uh, with Star Trek, the whole market and the whole genre is saturated with everything. So uh, having a podcast uh, and adding to it, what I noticed out there was that a lot of the other podcasts for Star Trek on iTunes were not consistent in their release dates of their podcasts. So I'm like, well, if we can get committed people to produce an episode a week with a minimal hiatus and minimal gap in that, then that should also drive uh, listenership. And same thing with Horde House, which happened to be three gay guys who talk about online gaming, and we have our own sassy selves. Sometimes I'm a bit more sassy than Rob. <laughs> Sometimes. A lot more sassy. But it, it, a lot more. But it depends on how you want to make your focus. You want to make it gay-related and kind of make that the focal point, or happen to talk about the topic you're passionate about and just happen to be gay. And you can kind of play with those identities as you... Uh, as your podcast evolves. You might find it switching from one to the other. Let me ask one more question of you guys, kind of building on that, because you talked about how when you went out and sought out the other Star Trek podcasts that you noticed a lot of them were not very consistent. And I think last year, I know I had harped on and a lot of us had talked about how important it is to be regular with your show because, you know, your audience, you get people out there that are looking for you. Like I know with OLR, we, we do our live thing on Sunday nights, but we have a large group of people that listen Monday mornings, whether it be their commute, whether it be at work doing, you know, data entry. And because we are a three hour show, you know, we help people get through the workday. So when we're not there, like we're not going to be there this week because we're here at GamerX, I, I'm, I'm expecting emails to come in on Monday that are like, I wanted, I needed you this week, man. I needed you to be there, You're not there. And I say, well, we have a 500 plus episode backlog. But my point is, what is it that you do to motivate yourself to keep that regularity? Because I think so many podcasts out there have a hard time getting past five or 10 episodes, you know, and I have people come up to me that are like, well, you know, my show's not 12 years old or anything, but we are, you know, 15 episodes. And I'm like, dude, 15 episodes, most shows don't get that far. That's a huge accomplishment. So... What's the trick to motivating yourself each week to keep doing the show? And we'll go this way again, Jamie. Well, fiber keeps me regular. No. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I Damn had to it. go there. Um, Metamucil. Well, honestly, I, my week wouldn't be complete if I didn't get to hang out with Rob and Loki. Aww. And Aww. Yeah. Because uh, no. um, they're awesome. I think we all inspire each other. But I, I will tell a little story. Back when we first started the podcast, I found on Dig, if that still exists, <laughs> someone said that that Dark Sakura needs to get back in the kitchen. Oh my God. I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> so when I Maybe did, he just wanted you to play Cooking Mama? I It didn't exist then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we had burgers. What an ass. <laughs> what a beep hole. <laughs> I think jerk face is an appropriate word. Maybe misogynist, who knows? But it was sort of, that sort of sparked a fire of spite in me so brilliant that it continues to blaze to this day. And yeah, and I still get, I still get a lot of the, you know, misogyny thing. I mean, it's really difficult to be a woman in a public thing, especially on an ongoing public show. And I'm like, well, you know what? I've been gaming probably longer than these people. I've, you know, I had an Odyssey 2. I, I, had, an, I had an Atari 5200. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I remember the, the horrid item that was the Fairchild Channel F. You know, <laughs> if anyone needs to gag, there's a bathroom that way. Um, but, um, but at the same time, you know, I was like, why should I be shown up by people who have no idea what they're talking about. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing because I love it. 
So, spite. <laughs> slay, slay. And fiber. I love you for that answer. <laughs> uh, so, you know, a big part of what Slykick and I do, because we also record live, so, you know, it's always a treat looking forward to like, oh, it's the weekend, we're going to hang out, play some games, and record. Uh, the problem that comes up sometimes is that we'll get sucked into whatever game we're playing, like, oh, this happened a lot recently with Mario Kart 8. Uh, but what we do is we try to interact with our fan base, because, you know, we, we're very passionate about, you know, sort of interacting with our fan base over on Twitter and Facebook and what have you. Uh, so we've started to leverage that to sort of keep ourselves in check. We'll interact with our listeners. You know, what do you want to hear us talk about this week? Um, you know, oh, this is what we're going to talk about. What do you think? And we'll discuss your answer on the air. And so we find that that really sort of keeps us in check and keeps us, you know, recording on a consistent basis. I'd say the big part for me personally is just to kind of steal Dark Sakura's answer is that I really just look forward to hanging out with my friends. You know, um, we're all passionate about gaming in kind of we all have different tastes. So it's really interesting to get a group of people like that together to just discuss, you know, hey, here's what's going on in news recently in the past few weeks. What do we all think about that? Because chances are in a group of four people or even, you know, two or three people, you're going to get differing opinions. And that's always fun to talk about. And it's just fun to hang out and talk shop. And we'll sit there and come up with just, you know, specific discussions like, well, let's talk about what was our first system and why do we play the games that we play now? You know, uh, gay characters in Nintendo games. Oh, that's going to be a fun subject. We just think about random things to talk about, honestly. And as long as we can do that every two weeks, then, I mean, it hasn't gotten boring yet. I mean, I'm still waiting for that to happen. <laughs> JK, love you. <laughs> yeah, um, if you decide that you want to start podcasting, um, there's definitely something that has to inspire you to do it, and that should be your basis and your ownership for the show. Um, and then also, uh, you have to take a good long look at it and decide uh, your schedule, uh, like how you're going, like how frequently you're going to record and how frequently you're going to post the show, and then agree on a time and stick to it. The least amount of overhead that you have for actually producing, recording, editing, and uploading the show, the better. Uh, if it becomes a chore, then you need to address that and figure out like what is the appropriate schedule for you. Um, what we've learned is, um, you know, after doing it for this long, is that when the news starts to dip, that's when we go into our bi-weekly schedule. Because we usually record every single Sunday at 2 p.m., you know, Pacific Standard Time. And, like, that's it. We all, we all know we're going to be at our computers and ready to do that Google Hangout at that time. Um, but then, you know eventually it becomes a bit of a grind. So over the summer we go into bi-weekly until we naturally feel like we're excited about games again and we start the, the weekly show. On the uh, Star Trek side, there's always news coming out, some comic books, some new novel, uh, Star Trek Three reboot, Roberto Orsai, fodder to talk about. So we're fortunate with that. But um, going on the scheduling side, it, the consistency is important. Picking a, a date and time and sticking to it's huge. Um, and start to think about budgeting time to do all the work. I would probably say I spend maybe five, sometimes more hours a week just on Starboard Power Cupping alone. I'm fortunate that Rob takes point on editing and producing Horde House, so I'm just there for the on-air talent, as he says, with quotey fingers, <laughs> talent. Um, but be consistent, and maybe if you're thinking about starting up a new podcast on whatever topic you're passionate about, uh, make sure you have the fire, you have the passion, be as bright and and flaming as, as Jamie. Uh, what, was, what was the phrase you said? Uh, sp the fire of spite? I, Brilliant I, as the stars or something? Well, was... I, well, I just think the fire's still burning. Yeah, yeah. it definitely is. But, but the soul but... still burns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true. So have that passion. And maybe start every once every two weeks. And if you just get a momentum going, then OK, maybe we can try this once a week. But don't be afraid to change the format of your show. But mm. as long as you communicate with your fans and you're consistent and you have the time per week to dedicate to it, it's huge, and don't ever let it become a chore. Then it's no longer fun, and then the passion's gone. Excellent. Well, we have about 15 minutes left on the clock, but I, I have other questions I can ask, but I'd rather hear the questions you guys have. So does anybody out there in the audience have any questions or something you want to ask the panel? Don't be shy. Nobody? OK, we got somebody. Oh, I'll come over there if I can. You're, you might have to come over here. I'm sorry. I, I'm deadly afraid of feedback, too. I'm getting that. I like, get away from that speaker. All right. <laughs> Your name, sir. 
my name is Mario. I'm uh, one of the co-hosts of, as you said, uh, La Palanca podcast. Um, I have a question for you all guys. I know you all have had uh, guests at your podcast at some point. We're probably getting ready to have a guest every so often, not regularly. So any tips and um, advice that you have for that? Great question. How do you recruit guests for your show? I think that's a good one. Uh, we'll go this way. Grandpa, if you want to start. Sorry, that's his nickname on Horde House. That's what I call him all the he time, He knows like Grandpa. seven mats, so I'm like yeah, the old it, one in the corner. It's fine. Um, <laughs> I got Grandpa from Horde House because I was playing WoW since its launch, and I'm that old, like, back in my day in vanilla, we used to have to queue up and wait 40 minutes until and go to the stone and queue everyone and summon everyone. Yeah, it was, That, and you tell me to get off the lawn. Get off my lawn! And yeah. tell old war stories. But the question, guess. So, uh, guess, if I need a guess, I just text Rob. Just text him. He'll sh he'll, he shows up. He's a podcast whore. Uh, no, but uh, seriously though, when it comes to guests, it's kind of twofold. Uh, one, kind of what's the point of view they're coming from? Are they a game developer? Are they a Star Trek Online developer? You know, what's that spin you're going to put on that episode? And is it going to be centric on that interviewer, interviewee, or is it just a supplement to your normal show? So think about that. And second, I would highly recommend you have some type of a 10, 15 minute Skype or otherwise phone call with the individual to make sure they, they speak good and, and write gooder. Um, every now and again, you have like, I got the lead designer for XYZ game or, or and they're the expert in their field. And you ask my question. Yeah, it was cool working for them. And they're just <laughs> silence. Like, well, that sucks. I've got seven more questions and they're four word answers. Each is going to be the shortest podcast ever. So I encourage you to have a 10 to 15 minute intro. Just, hey, how's it going? This is our show. We've been doing it for empty Ump episodes. This is the spin and just kind of get that vibe for them. And that we can kind of maybe cater the interview to that individual. Because not everyone has a great uh, face for radio like, like I do and, and, uh, and may not be a great a, uh, speaker. So just be very cognizant of that. And yeah, I agree entirely. But uh, also from a, a logistics perspective, um, do your homework beforehand and write out a list of things that they need to have in order to be able to record. So you're going to do either like a Skype conversation or a Google Hangout thing. Make sure that they have a microphone. Make sure that they have headphones and that they're writing, they're routing the audio through the headphones and not through the speakers so it has this like reverberating loop. These are things that you may think that everyone just knows naturally. Don't assume anything. <laughs> just go into it blind and just make sure that they have, you know, the, the proper tools to be able to do it. Yes, Todd. And I can project, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go ahead, yes. girl. There's plenty of resonance space in this lungs, just saying. Um, from my own experience, when I was a guest on Game Bar before yep. I became the permanent guest on Game Bar, yes. um, I did not think I was cool enough to be on their show. Whatever. <laughs> uh, as I'm doing right now. <laughs> that is great advice because the very worst thing they could say is no, no. and it's not yeah. that bad. Then move on. Yeah, find the next guest. I wholeheartedly agree with that. The, just just ask. The worst you're going to get is no or ignored or something, but you'd be very surprised what might happen. Uh, a story, sorry to kind of jump in line here, but uh, just a story that's very, like, wow, that really resonates with me when I, I think about this question is um, I have an associate uh, at Vogue Network who does the show right before Orange Lunch Radio. His name's Bobby Blackwolf. Shout out, Bobby, if you're watching. Uh, Bobby does a great show, kind of a one-man show, and he does a lot of interviews on his show. And um, he had an interview with one of the guys, and I, I'm so... Uh, apologetic because I don't remember exactly which guy it was, but at Gearbox Software. Um, and he was the guy who kind of did the whole it, open mouth insert foot and said that whole thing about girlfriend mode. Do you remember when that whole thing happened? And it was like, oh, that was really super awkward, right? So Bobby, he went and he asked the guy like, hey, can I get an interview with you or whatever? And and he found out, yeah, you're the, the, you're the first one to actually uh, get an interview with this guy after the fact because you're the only one that's asked. 
He was the first one to get an interview with the guy to clarify the comments on air about, you know, you know, do you feel remorseful about this? You know, and all this stuff about, you know, what was said because he asked and nobody else asked. Everybody was writing these blogs. Everybody had an opinion, but nobody asked. So ask. Absolutely. Um, anything further you guys want to add as far as uh, getting guests on shows? Sorry to jump in, Jeremy. How dare you? Um, really, the only thing I would have to add, other than what's already been said, is if you have a plan in mind for the episode that you want to do, if you have a specific subject in mind, and you know somebody that's either a follower of your show or another podcaster or whatever, and you kind of know their tastes or at least familiar with it, you can kind of angle it that way. Like, for example, I've had uh, Captain Spike on Koopa Club many times, anytime we want to talk about game design specifically, because I know that's his wheelhouse, just because of Twitter interactions or Facebook interactions or what have you. So just kind of getting to know the person that you're going to be asking to be on your show just to say, hey, what should we talk about? That's kind of something that they can play into so that it's not going to be an awkward conversation where they're just like, yes, no, I have to go. <laughs> so, I mean, that would, that would be the biggest thing I could throw out there. Don't make me say it. I should go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a big part of what we do over at GameBuoy.org is that we try to sort of, you know, again, get news and views that maybe aren't on people's radar already. And so for me, a big part of what that identity is, is that we'll tend to go to people who don't have shows already or people who have shows that talk about things sort of different than, than what we do um, and, and really sort of dig into a topic. You know, we did an oral history on rhythm gaming that I had Rob on for because, you know, he started up as a Bimani show. And so I knew that you know, even if we didn't have a lot of crossover on our shows, he'd have a lot of really valuable and interesting things to say about the design and sort of impact that these games had on the scene. Um, and so you know, I'm sure that all of you out there, you know, you're here at a convention, you probably have a lot of friends that you know, are, are really into gaming, you probably have a lot of personal contacts. I would just look at like, who would have something really interesting to say about this topic? And then you know, regardless of, of whether they have their own show or they have their own company, they're a programmer or whatever, if you think they can add something to your show, don't be afraid to ask them to come on and say it. I think really the last thing is something that I brought up um, when we were talking about how we spread the word earlier too is don't be afraid to talk to people in person. I've picked up a few people go, just going to Atari party. I don't know how many people are familiar with it. Basically, people get together, bring old Atari systems, and play all day. And sometimes some of the big names from Atari show up there. And it's, I've met a few people, referred them onto the show, and we've had a couple interviews come out of it. Um, just knowing people who know people, you know, the word of mouth, I can't really, I mean, with social networking, it's important, but being able to actually approach somebody, see the cool thing that they're doing and say, hey, would you be willing to come on the show? Here's my card. That goes a long way. All right. Also, I have, oh, yeah. I, I, have a, uh, I would be remiss not to explain how Todd came on to the show, considering he was a guest that then became third chair. Uh, we, uh, we found out about Todd Harper's work for uh, his work on the closed world uh, that he did with MIT uh, Gambit Game Lab. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, it was a flash game uh, with like queer themes. It's about coming out. It was set in a fantasy world. And the combat was sort of a Rochambeau of uh, conversation. It's a fascinating game, fantastic. And then you're dealing with sort of like gender neutral um, protagonists where you kind of telegraph your own gender onto the character. It was really interesting. So we talked to Todd and um, the show was fantastic. He came on again, you know, a couple of months later and then he came on a couple of months later and then eventually he became one of our regular rotating guests and then we realized that he was really the third point in our Triforce. You know, he sort of rounded out the discussion and coming from a background in academia really brought something that we did not have to the show. And um, yeah, so that's how that happened. Actually, a very similar story happened with um, Matt coming on to Horde House, because originally the show was just myself and, and Extifer were on the show. And uh, we decided to add two co-hosts later on. You know, Matt had started out as a guest, and we had another guy, Shane, and just friends of mine that worked out really well on radio. Like, I kind of never realized, like, podcasting might be something they were into, but at least he seemed to be pretty into it at the time. And now he has his own podcast. So well, there you go. And we had Loki. Oh, absolutely, For yeah. OLR. He yeah. just showed up to the first show and kept showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, Love it. I just couldn't get enough of Rob Roberts. That's why I do podcasting. <laughs> All right. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I want to check if we have other questions. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I got it. We'll, we'll try to squeeze them both in, okay? It's okay. I also have the ability to 
All right, go for it. This is a fantastic question because, you know, especially being an indie podcaster, I find that sometimes we're focused on the big stuff, the Nintendo, the PlayStation, the Microsoft and all that. We're focused so much on that big stuff, but there's so many other people that want to get their games out. And that's part of why I love GamerX, by the way, for the record. How many of you guys have seen some real kick-ass indie stuff you had never heard of before? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There is so much talent here. Okay? So, like... I, I, we we need to be exposed to this because sometimes we just don't know. So I would say it's almost the inverse of the guesting question. Email us, let us know, find us, yeah. scope us out on the tw Twitter's. Almost every podcast wants you to be able to email them. So don't be afraid to say like, hey, I'm making this game and I want to come on the show to talk about the game because we'll check it out. And if we think it's something that might gel with our audience, we'll have you on because I got to admit, sometimes there's games that I play them and I go, I'm not so sure that like, you know, Baby Killer 5000 or whatever <laughs> is an appropriate match. <laughs> you know, good luck with your Kickstarter. But I, I don't know if this is a good match for the show, but if it's something like, hey, this is a music game. Oh yes, I'm listening. You know, so anyway, but quickly, other thoughts, like what, what's the best way for uh, a game that you might not know about to get your attention? Uh, yeah, contacts with the social media, but if you're looking specifically for podcasts, go to uh, iTunes and maybe do a search for podcasts in that genre. Uh, MMOs or video games or LGBT, whatever that keyword or key phrase is, go to iTunes, Stitcher, uh, so search by them and just find how they're connected through social media. Reach out to them. And I've got 12 years of background in education, so hit me up after this so we can talk. Um, I would say Twitter. Um, because it's searchable and you can directly contact people without having to go through and looking up their email and all of that sort of stuff. I think never underestimate the power of Twitter. You can contact people directly. Yeah. On the direct message, you could, um, did, does anyone find that or just message? public messages, either way. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. yeah. You know, DM strangers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah. Do not follow them and go, hi, I found your Twitter. And I, oh, no. no, no, no. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, no, do, I think do a actually, I I I'm I would say if you do it to the show account, I would say the show's accounts are kind of used to it. The yeah. the individuals might be a little bit like yeah that situation. Yeah, but like yeah, just do a public message directly to the show, and I think you get the fastest response. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have nothing to add because that's pretty much all I would have to say. Yeah, just seriously though, a direct message on Twitter or even just finding a show on Facebook and just sending them a message, posting on their wall, anything. Because, I mean, if, if you're an indie podcast, chances are you're really kind of looking for that interaction with anybody. So I would say that that's easy, probably the easiest way to get a hold of someone. I'm really just adding my voice here to the choir. I'm a huge proponent of Twitter because you can, you know, just very simply, you know, send a message to, you know, at Game Buoy or at Orange Lounge Radio. And we love to hear from you guys. We absolutely love it. Also, you know, Tumblr, um, Google Plus, just all of the social media platforms where, where we all try to be on all of these things. And we'd all be happy to hear from people like you because we are, you know, very passionate about these kinds of projects. Even better than email? It's yes. faster. I it's prefer faster. it. Yeah. It's faster. But keep attending events too, you know, speaking with people. If you, you know, can always talk to us after the panel. Well, you can exchange information that way too. I, I am a, I like being a face-to-face -face kind of person. Um, I'm not a Twitter person very well. I sort of sometimes remember I have one, but I'm a Tumblr person. And Tumblr is actually, I have found more ways to network and see people who are developing things. You can search the tags for indie developer podcast. That's what I do every time I post up that we're about to broadcast a show. So Excellent. Tumblr. We're gonna help you out right now though, real quick. What's the website? We can all check out this game. All right, check it out, com. check it out, y'all. Yes. All right, thank you very much for your question. That was great, and good luck, good luck. I, I find that a lot of podcasters, um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it real, like there's a lot of ego sometimes in podcasting, so when you come... You would know. <laughs> <laughs> 
But what I mean by that is when you come <laughs> when you come to the podcast, you know, for especially for a lot of smaller shows that are just starting, they're going to be like, oh, this person wants to talk to me. Oh, hey, hey, this is pretty awesome. You know, that that's a huge boost. Like the first time I know OLR ever got contacted in a way like that, like it was like this huge like, wow, people really do listen to this. This is so cool. So good luck to you. Good luck to you. I'm, I, I got the sign that we're going to get the hook in just a minute, but I've got to squeeze in one more question. Got to squeeze in one more question. Our, our, our friend from Geek Charisma is here. What do you want? Hi, um, I'm from Geek Charisma. I'm Joy. Um, I was wondering, other than the podcast, on the social media sites, um, what sort of things should we post? Great question. And I'm going to keep it, since we are limited on time, just kind of open. Who, who wants to jump in here? Yeah. yeah, Jamie. I would say don't do anything that you would mock a celebrity for. As in, keep your keep personal drama out of everything. Yeah. Be mindful of what you say, and please use proper grammar. <laughs> uh, show notes are good. Show, oh, show notes are good. About this video, this game, this link, this story. Throw that up on your Facebook, even though we regularly tell people that their Facebook on fire. <laughs> I was going to say exactly that. Yeah. Just be sure to post all of the resources for your show that'll help people follow along. If you talk about a game. Um, if there are tweets that are relevant to what you talked about by like a games developer, we'll sometimes retweet those on our, our show account. Um, just because you know, it can be really useful for people to see these quotes in you know, sort of people's own words. Post anything that gets the listeners actually doing something, responding to a post, uh, making them go out and do some research. We do away missions for the Star Trek podcast. Where they all go out and watch a movie or an episode of Star Trek, and then we encourage them to provide feedback. So that's interaction there. That'll be good, too. I like to once a week or maybe more, like if there's a story I know we're going to talk about on the show, I like to put the question out there on social media. Like, what do you guys think about this topic? Because we're going to be talking about it this week. And even if we only get like two or three answers, that's still something that I can gauge. And when I do the show on Sunday, I can go and I can say, so this is what some of our listeners thought about this topic. And what do you, you know, what do you guys think about it? And then it's like we're actually having a conversation and you're there even though you're not. So that's a really great way for the listeners to feel involved. So like if you know what you're going to talk about in advance, throw it out there. I mean, the agenda of your podcast doesn't have to be a secret. I'm not sure why some people are like, I can't tell you what we're talking about this week. It's secret. Surprise. Surprise show. <laughs> and I'm not sure what's to gain from that unless you have like a real, really great exclusive thing. All right. That is it. We are out of time here. Thank you guys so much for being here and supporting independent podcasting. You're all amazing. <laughs>